Gujantif, everyone. Let's find ourselves on page 880. A prayer for the candle lighting. Let's all join together. 880. As the sacred night of Yom Kippur begins, may the sight of these candles kindle within us a spirit of devotion and repentance. May we forgive one another as we seek divine forgiveness, drawing closer to one another in love, and drawing closer to God's law of righteousness and the truth. where we'll find the meditation before Kol Nidre. We'll join together responsibly. Three ninety seven. Eternal God who calls us to repentance, we are grateful for the opportunity to answer your call to forsake our sins and to turn to you with all our hearts. Even the admission that we have done wrong does not come easily. Our pride is as tall as the mountains, our vanity is as wide as the sea, and excuses abound. But before you there are no secrets. To you all stands revealed. Our pettiness and our greed, our selfishness and our weakness, our running to do evil and our limping to do good, all these are known to you. On this night of atonement, we yearn to become better than we have been. For you, O Lord, have given us the great gift of atonement, enabling individuals and communities to return to you and to do your will. Open our hearts to the call of this sacred night, so that the words of our prayers may remain with us, to renew us and to refine us. May our, our deeds, deeds make, make us, us worthy, worthy to hear your divine assurance, assurance Salakti, I have forgiven.
invite our religious committee chair, Adele Wood, to join us on the Bima, to open the Aron Kodesh, as we prepare for the chanting of Kol Nidre this evening. I'd like to invite past presidents who are with us this evening to join us on the Bima for the honor of holding a sacred scroll. I'd like to invite Mark Packman, David Friedman, Arlene Rosenbaum, and Barry Klein, Natalie Brooks. By the authority of the heavenly court and by the authority of this earthly court, with divine consent and with the consent of this holy congregation, Ohiv Shalom, we hereby declare it permissible to pray with those who have transgressed. <laughs> Yeshiva <laughs> Ya 
Telling of a tolling, lost and hearing the law, Kayomim, Nidron, Lord, 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 Page 402 will begin the first half of this reading teaching by Rabbi Harold Kushner, All Vows. All vows, promises, and commitments made in your presence, may we be given the strength to keep them. May we take our own lives seriously enough to heed them, honoring our resolves in the way we eat and drink, the way we work and rest, the way we regulate our lives. Commitments made to loved ones and friends, pledges made to worthwhile causes. Help us to become as compassionate and generous as we sought to be at those noble moments. The promises we made to worship and to study, we met them when we made them, but distractions were many and our wills were weak. This, this time, time may, may we be, be strong, strong enough, enough. May, may our, our better selves, selves prevail. prevail. As we prepare for the second chanting of the Kol Nidre, I'd like to invite uh, leaders of our various organizations. I'd like to invite Saul Jacobs on behalf of our men's club, Barbara Panzik on behalf of our sisterhood, Rachel Bitesh, a president of our PTO, and Jacob Guba on behalf of USY. Rachel.
خراج نو Page 402, all vows, promises made in the synagogue by young people who glimpsed what life as Jews might hold in store for them, may devotion and idealism be with them all their days. Oh God, we meant the promises we made to you and to each other, to ourselves, even as we mean the vows we silently make tonight. Reach down to us as we strive to reach up toward you. Give us the strength and self-respect, the fidelity and vision to grow to become the people we have sworn to be. O oh, worthy vows and commitments which we make from this Yom Kippur until the next, May we be faithful enough and firm enough to keep them. As we prepare for the third chanting of the Kol Nidre, let me invite officers of the synagogue to join us on the Bima, our president, Anna Podab, our recording secretary, Hedy Hoffman, our treasurer, Ron Stark, And our Vice President, Danny Shilett. Take this hand. Put this hand up. Okay, let me come over here. Rock. I can, I can. Dana, Dana, come over here.
Tadi Hasarna Four hundred. Any slach lechol adat b'nei Israel legager hagar betocham ki lechol ha'am bishkaga. May forgiveness be granted to the whole congregation of Israel and to the stranger in their midst, for all the people have transgressed unwittingly. In your unbounded mercy, forgive the sin of this people as you have ever forgiven our people from the days of Egypt until now. And the Lord said, I have pardoned them as you have asked.
Praised are you, Lord, our God, sovereign of the universe, who has kept us in life, sustained us, and enabled us to reach this season. Amen. Before we begin our Mariv evening service, I want to express how sorry I am if I have hurt you by something that I've done or something that I have failed to do during the course of this past year. What I've said or what I have failed to say. I vow that I will strive to improve my ways, and I ask for your understanding and forgiveness. As we turn to the Mariv evening service, we'd like to honor a couple with their son who is celebrating their fifth High Holy Days with us. So and so, celebrating their fifth year, Alex and Annalise Ocanto Romo. And Aviv, come on up, guys. <laughs> Page four oh eight. Or. 
410. I just break your heart. <laughs> With everlasting love, you have loved your people, Israel, teaching us the Torah and its mitzvot, instructing us in its laws and judgments. Therefore, O Lord our God, when we lie down and when we rise up, we shall speak of your commandments and rejoice in your Torah and mitzvot, for they are our life and the length of our days. On them we will meditate day and night. May your love never depart from us. Praised are you, O Lord, who loves his people Israel. Ki heim chayenu ve'orech yamenu uvehem nege yom avalayla ve'ahavat tcha al tasir mimenu le'olamim baruch as we continue individually, 414, 415. (laughs) 
Therefore, keep these words of mine in your heart and in your soul. Bind them as a sign upon your arm and let them be a reminder above your eyes. Teach them to your children, speaking of them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down at night and when you rise up in the morning. Write them upon the doorposts of your homes and upon your gates. Thus your days and the days of your children will be multiplied on the land which the Lord promised to your ancestors for as long as the heavens remain over the earth. Together aloud, Vayomer 416. Vayomer Adonai, El We'll continue on the bottom third of page 418 as Cantor leads us into Micha Mocha. O oh God, to lie down in peace and awaken us to life on the morrow. Great. In the last two couplets, praise to you, God of peace, whose love is always with us, his people Israel, and protects Jerusalem in love.
fanaheinu, u mea kareinu, u telken ofecha. Tas direinu, i this day atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you of all your sins shall you be clean before the Lord before the Lord into the evening Amidah, Chatsi Kaddish, 422. for individual quiet prayer, reflection, meditation. We can find the evening Amidah for this Yom Kippur, beginning 424, 425, continuing through to the conclusion on the bottom of pages 440 or 441.
the truth to love we return again to Let's turn now with the choir to Shalom Rav, our prayer for peace, which we'll find on page 432. of life and blessing, peace and prosperity. May we and all your people, the house of Israel, be inscribed for a good and peaceful life. Praised are you, O Lord, source of all peace. <laughs> profound relief this past spring, and I want to share that special moment with you all tonight. I was reading an article regarding robots and mechanization, and the types of jobs they will be able to perform perfectly as time goes on. You remember going into an elevator back in the day when there was a gentleman standing in the corner or sitting on a stall? He had a pressed, beautifully pressed uniform, a cap on his head. You would tell him the floor that you wanted, and he would turn kind of like a little wheel, 
Right? That's right? Yeah, some people are willing to admit that they remember that. That's good. And then he would announce your... Look, the job had its ups and downs. But the guy had a job. And now all you do when you get in there, you push a button and you're on your own. Only in the fanciest of buildings, or maybe in some very fancy department stores, you'll find that man either standing or sitting on a stool, finely pressed uniform and a cap on his head. Now, it's all mechanized. There used to be more toll takers on the turnpike, which to be honest, took its toll on the drivers. Today we're happy, just oh, we're so happy, we smile, to drive through, zip by in the easy pass and express lanes. It's been mechanized. Do you know the newly refurnished Scudder Falls Bridge? No toll takers. Either you have an easy pass or you pay like three times as much. The state gets in touch with you. Many workers on the factory floor, especially in manufacturing, are no longer needed. Because a robot can do the same job without a lunch break, without days off, and without health insurance. How can a human compete? You know, folks, if we're going to be concerned about anyone infringing on our turf and taking our jobs, it's not real human beings with hearts and souls searching for a new life, but rather it's mechanization and robotics, artificial intelligence that's taking over. Back to the article about robots and my profound relief. As I got to the end of the article, I read a list of occupations that were immune to robotic takeover. And just about at the end of the list, there it was. <laughs> no, there aren't that many of us to matter so much. Clergy. Clergy. Clergy of all types. Yeah. Thank God. Thank God. We went into the right business. We're safe. Person of the cloth could not be replaced by an amalgam of metal and software. That was my moment, indeed, of profound relief. I'm safe. Yes, I'm safe. But am I? Really? It would be just too easy to feel perfectly at ease, and it's just not my nature. I couldn't help but continue to wonder, why not? Why not a robot rabbi? Or, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Rabbi Robot. <laughs> Thankfully, nobody applauded to that. <laughs> it would have the artificial intelligence to give the perfect sermon every time in exactly the amount of time you programmed it. <laughs> Isn't that what you've been praying for all these years? There would be a special setting on sermons for short and sweet. You couldn't go wrong. But then, I don't know, I don't know, maybe people don't want to hear words of the spirit from a mechanical device. Or do they? Look at a group of four or five people sitting together. You know, wherever they are, in a restaurant or wherever, four or five people sitting together, they make no eye contact with each other. They never look at each other. And they exchange no words. They each must much prefer to look into their little screen and have a relationship with megabytes of memory they can softly cradle in the palm of their hand. Does that person really want a human being and standing in front of them? Or would they feel more comfortable with a talking screen? The more I thought about it, the more I came to feel that I and my successors, we can be totally replaceable. 
And reading the following article didn't help at all. But before I tell you about the next article, I just need to set it up for a moment. I guess we're going back 25, 30 years ago that some of our finest young people who were searching for a deeper spirituality and not finding it in the synagogue, they traveled east and they found themselves in ashrams in different lands. They were taking in the great wisdom of the Buddhist tradition and they came to be known as Jubus. Jubus. You'll therefore understand that I couldn't help but be especially alarmed when I saw this other article about a robotic Buddhist priest called Mindar. This is real. An android robotic priest that preaches in a 400 year old Japanese temple. Yeah, this is for real. Today in Japan, Mindar's claim to fame is that it channels ancient wisdom through the technology of the future. And this priest Mindar is not the first of its kind. Because for some years now already, there's been a humanoid robot available for hire at Japanese funerals. A robot at a funeral, where it chants sutras and taps on a drum in the tradition of a Buddhist priest. Its creator and developer is quoted as saying, here it is, with artificial intelligence, we hope it will grow in wisdom to help people overcome the most difficult trouble in life. How could I compete? You know, to be honest, if a robot really wants, if a robot really wants to be a rabbi, if a robot really wants to be a rabbi, as Mel Brooks said in The Frisco Kid, Lazen Gayen. Gesinte hate. If that's gonna make you happy, robot, it's all yours. I wish him or her or it all the best. But the reality is that I've, I've got the whole question backwards. I've got the whole question backwards. I'm asking the wrong question. The real question is not about robots becoming more human. The real question is about we humans just being robots. You know what I mean by that? It's about we humans just being robots. It's about humans living life robotically. It's about humans not being fully humans. If you look up robot in my online dictionary, which can be pronounced one of two ways. It can be pronounced robot or robot. How many of you say robot like I do? Sherry, come on, you can't be the only one. Robot, a robot. If you say robot, robot, just raise your hand. I don't want to see. And if you say robot, I mean, you wouldn't say it that way, you know, but if you say robot, raise your hand. No, it can't be that way. Where, where are you people from? You're from Jersey, okay, so that explains it. Is there anybody from Northeast Philadelphia that says robot? That is very disappointing. If, you, if you're from Northeast Philadelphia and you say robot, just say robot. That's all you have to say, raise your hand. Robot. Now so, uh, Joel, how long ago was it? It's uh, about six weeks ago. My nephew Joel is here. So uh, Joel and I went to see a Phillies game. They won in the 11th inning. Yeah, won in the 11th inning. It was a really great game. And uh, I was giving Joel just what he was looking, exactly what he was looking for, watching the game and hearing a preview of my sermon tonight. <laughs> hey, sorry, Joel. I have all the things I got to apologize for. So, Joel, I said to you, I'm going to be talking about robots. And you said, they're not robots, they're robots. 
Well, you didn't say it exactly that way. Robots, robots. So, you know, I, I, it can be pronounced robot or robot. And I'm with all the minority who raised their hand <laughs> and said robot. From Northeast Philadelphia. From Jersey, they say robot. Right, and from Rockville, Maryland. So anyhow, you know, am I a robot? The definition is a person who acts and responds in a mechanical, routine manner. An automaton? Yes, the real question to be asked is, am I just a robot? As we begin this holiest day of the year, will I go through this day like a robot? In a mechanical, routine manner, like an automaton? Or can I get to somehow a more meaningful place? Can I feel more deeply while I'm here? A robot can't feel, but we can. Can I dream tonight and tomorrow of how I can be different and better? during this coming year? Or am I trapped into being the product of how I've been programmed? And I just can't change now after all this time, just like a robot. Can I pray with all of my heart and all of my soul with kavana, as they call it, with intention and focus, with mindfulness? Can I find real spirituality here? here, within our synagogue and within ourselves, without traveling to the east where I might just come face to face with priest Mindar. And then after the show for tomorrow night, in my everyday life and the other 364 days of the year, in this world of creeping technology, how truly human am I? We would each do well to ask this question. How truly human am I? How much do I just go through the motions of living? And how can I become more human and less robotic? The noted rabbi Jack Reamer writes a letter to his, it's on behalf of himself and his wife, to his soon to be born first great grandchild. And so he writes like this, Dear, whatever your name is going to be, he writes, Welcome to the world, a world that is very different than the one we were born in, we were born into. There are lots of inventions that you will take for granted that did not even exist when we were born. Know that no matter how much the technology may change, some things will never change. Love. Kindness, justice, honesty, and holiness. These things will be as important in your generation as they have been in mine and all previous generations. Friends, to be truly human is to cherish these qualities, love, kindness, justice, honesty, and holiness. I know that I will never perform a wedding ceremony, ceremony of holy matrimony of two robots. They know nothing of love. I can't imagine they ever will. But we do. And we can even more. And robots know nothing of any kind of feelings. Feelings, it's feelings that make us human. Experience in this coming year, promise to do this, to feel the panorama of human feelings. Happiness, celebration, caring, empathy, sadness, laughter, I just received a little tin filled with candy and written on it, it says, 
quote, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Said by the great philosopher of the 20th century, Charlie Chaplin. Don't waste a day being a robot. Laughter most often takes place within the context of human interaction, not in the middle of a tweet. Long before the invention of a robot, Aristotle once said, the unexamined life is not worth living. The truly human is self-aware. The truly human makes mistakes and knows that he, she makes mistakes and knows that he, she even sins but looks inside and acknowledges these errors and wants to be better. In fact, vows to be better. Today is all about self-awareness and examining our lives. To be human is to live a life of values. Unlike the robot, we have the freedom to choose how we will live our lives. To use that freedom is to be truly human. To surrender that freedom is to be robotic. We can choose to be honest, or we can be corrupt. It's our choice. We can choose to be ethical, or we can be immoral. It's our choice. We can choose to be faithful, or we can be robbing. We can choose to be generous, or we can be choose to be stingy. We can choose to pursue justice, or we can be indifferent. We are human. We can choose how we want to be and how we will be this coming year. The reality is that the ongoing development of robotics is inevitable and inexorable, and that is not a bad thing at all, not at all. Some jobs will be eliminated, and humans can retrain and become something new and become something different. The coal miner can, in fact, learn a new skill in a green industry and live a healthier life for himself and for all of us. Easier said than done, but it's possible. Did you see the article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal about Erie, Pennsylvania? Erie, Pennsylvania has gone through tough times in the last 30, 40 years. They've lost their manufacturing base. The city has become a terribly poor city. Their population decreases when they take a census every 10 years. And now Erie, Pennsylvania is doing everything they possibly can. They feel like this is their last chance, but they're doing everything they possibly can to reinvent themselves as a city, which means that so many of the people living in Erie, Pennsylvania will need to reinvent themselves as individuals. Easier said than done, but possible. Artificial intelligence can be, and in many ways, is a blessing. I just read that the Technion, Israel's Institute of Technology, is doing groundbreaking work in AI, artificial intelligence, in the treatment of breast cancer. And we can be sure that there will be better and smarter generations of robots yet to come. But the challenge for us is for us to be better and for us to be smarter. And we can, if we choose to be more and more human, less and less robotic. How? Laughing more and experiencing the panorama of emotions only humans can know. Living the examined life 
that this day represents. Choosing how we will live. Choosing the values by which we will live. And cherishing what Rabbi Reamer hopes most for his yet unborn grandson. As he writes, to that little, whatever your name is going to be, know that no matter how much the technology may change, some things will never change. Love, kindness, justice, honesty, and holiness. These things will be as important in your generation as they have been in our generation and all previous generations. Let's turn back to the Machser on page 446. We're going to find there a piyut, a poem of the Kol Nidre service. As you find your page, 446, you'll note that it's an anonymous medieval poem which describes Yom Kippur as a progression from Kol Nidre to the morning to the Ne'ila in the evening. Each verse includes the words Ya'aleh, rise in the evening, Yavo will come in the morning, and Yerah will appear at the end of the day. And if you look at the second word of each line, the poem is a reverse acrostic. At the first letter of the middle word in each clause, it goes from tough all the way back to the bottom where you'll find an olive. As if throughout the day we move back in our recollection, allowing the events of the past year to pass before our mind's eye. So let's all rise, Ya'aleh 446. Lai, 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 Let's continue responsibly. May our penitence rise to you at nightfall, our pardon come before you in the morning, and our cry be heard by you at dusk. May our trust in you rise up at nightfall, our hope be granted for your sake in the morning, and our atonement come at us. May our deliverance mount at nightfall, our cleansing come to us in the morning, and your favor come to us at dusk. May our remembrance rise to you at nightfall, our, our assemblage, assemblage be acceptable, acceptable to you in the morning, in the morning and, and your glory shine upon us at dusk. Let's 
Let's all be seated. We continue on page 448. The soul is yours. The body is your creation. Have compassion on your handiwork. Haneshama lach. Haneshama lach. is yours, the body is yours. Forgive us, Lord, for the sake of your name. We have come trusting in you. Lord, deal kindly for your name's sake. Gracious and compassionate God, forgive us for numerous are our sins. I'm sure you all know that inclusion is at the heart of our synagogue. We are many different types of individuals with different strengths, and in some areas, not such strengths. But our deepest concern is that all of us be included as part of one community. In the sanctuary, throughout our building, how our building functions in our Hebrew school, in every aspect, area of our synagogue life. So I'd like to offer this reading that is entitled The Litany for Wholeness, for Inclusion. Let us pray for all of God's people, for people who are blind and cannot see, and for those who can see but are blind to people around them. God, help us to touch each other. For people who move slowly because of accident, illness, or disability, and for those who move too fast to be aware of the world in which they live. God, help us to work together. For people who are deaf and cannot hear, and for those who can hear but ignore the cries of others, God, help us to respond to each other. For people who learn slowly, for people who learn in different ways, and for people who learn quickly and easily, but often choose ignorance, God, help us to grow in your wisdom. For families, friends, and caregivers who serve people with disabilities, and for those who feel awkward in their presence, God, help us to see each other with new eyes. For people who feel isolated by their disabilities, and for people who contribute to that sense of isolation. God, change our lives. For all people in your creation, that we may learn to respect each other and learn how to live together in peace. God, bind us all together. Amen. Amen. Page 455. In anticipation of reciting God's 13 attributes of mercy, of compassion, of love, of kindness. Let's begin on the top of the page, and then we'll pick up in the Hebrew, El Horei Talano. O God, our sovereign, enthroned in mercy, your rule, you rule with loving kindness. You are generous in forgiveness to sinners. You deal mercifully with all creatures, not according to the evil of their deeds. We continue in the Hebrew, El Horeta Lano. El Horeta Lano, Lamar Shalosh Esrei. 
Zechor lanu hayom berich elosh esrei. Kamo datala anav mikadem kamo shekatu. Vayered Adonai be'anan v'yatsev imosham v'yakra v'shem Adonai. Vayavor Adonai al pana v'yikra. Adonai, Adonai, al rechum v'tanu. Kichatanu melchalanu, makenu kefoshanu kiata. Adonai tov salach v'rav chesed lechol kore. Turning now to page 459, 458, and I'd like to ask you to look in the Hebrew, especially on the fifth line. We say, Al Tashlichenu Leitzikna. O God, do not just send us off at the time of old age. When we lose our strength, do not abandon us. So at what age does old age actually become a reality? I just want to read to you a, a short piece that's entitled, No to Self, Older is Happier. Though we as a society extol the years of early adulthood, research studies have demonstrated that younger adults are not as happy as adults in their older years. In the years of later relatively healthy adulthood, ages 50 to 75, and 85, 95, and 105, depending on your age, the horizon of time has shifted and the outlines of a person's story have become much clearer. The future tense is greatly diminished in importance, and it is the present tense, the possibilities for pleasure, connectedness, and a sense of emotional embeddedness that emerges into prominence. Develop developmentally speaking, older adults tend to live in the moment, and this appears to increase their satisfaction and well-being. Hear our voice, Lord our God, spare us, pity us. Accept our prayer in your gracious love. Turn us to you, O Lord, and we shall return. Renew us as in days of old.
Vashivenu Adonai Elecha Ven Ashuv Achadesh Yameinu Atashlichenu milifanecha verrua kotshecha atikach mimenu. Do not banish us from your presence. Do not deprive us of your Holy Spirit. Atashlichenu leetzikna kichlot kochenu alta azvenu. Do not cast us off in old age when our strength declines. Do not forsake us. Do not forsake us, O Lord our God. Do not make yourself distant from us. We continue with the piyut on page 460, believed to be based on the words of the Song of Songs in the Bible, Ani dodi v'dodi li, one saying to God, I am my beloved's, my beloved is mine, our God and God of our ancestors, forgive us, pardon us, grant us atonement. Eloheinu v'elohei avoteinu, selach lanu, In just a moment, we'll be rising for the first confessional, the Ashamnu. Before we do, stand for the confessional of all of our misdeeds, how we've missed the mark during the course of the past year. Cantor and I would like to share a vidui, a confessional, but what's known as a positive confessional that comes to us from the wonderful modern Orthodox rabbi, social activist, 
uh, Rabbi Avi Weiss, a positive vidui. We have loved. We have blessed. We have grown. We have spoken positively. We have raised up. We have shown compassion. We have acted enthusiastically. We have been empathic. We have cultivated truth. We have given good advice. We have respected. We have learned. We have forgiven. We have comforted. We have been created. We have stirred. We have been spiritual activists. We have been just. We have longed for Israel. We have been merciful. We have given full effort. We have supported. We have contributed. We have repaired. And so with that positive vidui, the positive confessional, let's turn now to the text in the Machser will arise. Page 463, 462. Our God and God of our ancestors, may our prayers come before you and may you not ignore our pleas. We are neither so arrogant nor so stubborn as to declare that we are righteous and have not sinned, for indeed we have sinned. Shalom, we 
We continue responsibly on page 467. We have sinned against you by hardening our hearts. We have sinned against you publicly and privately. We have sinned against you by evil thoughts. We have sinned against you by insecure confession. Intentionally and unintentionally. And we have sinned against you by desecrating your name. For all these sins, sins O God of forgiveness, forgiveness forgive us, us pardon us, us, grant us atonement. They are We have sinned against you by foolish talk. We have sinned against you knowingly and unknowingly. By bribery. We have sinned against you by slander. We have sinned against you in eating and drinking. We have sinned against you by false pride. For all these sins, O oh God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us, and grant us atonement. We have sinned against you by wanton glances. We have sinned against you by effrontery. We have sinned against you by perverting justice. We have sinned against you by envy. Achet shechatanu by being stubborn. We have sinned against you by tailbearing. We have sinned against you by causeless hatred. We have sinned against you by confusion of values. For all these sins, O God of forgiveness, forgive us, pardon us. Grant us atonement. I'd like to invite Anil Middleman to join us on the Bima to open the Aron Kodesh as we turn to Avinu Malkeno 472. Avinu Malkinu Khatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkinu Khatanu Lefanecha. Avinu Malkinu Ilanu Melech Ele Ata. Avinu Malkinu Ilanu Melech Ele Ata. Avinu Malkinu Hachazirenu Bichuva Shlema Lefanecha. Avinu Malkinu Hachazirenu Bichuva Shlema Lefanecha. Avinu malkeinu chadesh aleinu shana tova. Avinu malkeinu chadesh aleinu shana tova. Avinu malkeinu shalach refua shlema lechole amecha. Avinu malkeinu shalach refua shlema lechole amecha. Avinu malkeinu hafer hatzat oiveinu. Avinu malkeinu hafer hatzat oiveinu. Avinu malkeinu zochreinu b'zichron tov lefanecha, our parent, our sovereign, remember us favorably. Avinu malkeinu chatanu b'sefer chayim tovim. Avinu malkeinu inscribe us in the book of goodness. Avinu malkeinu katved b'sefer geula v'shua. Avinu Malkeinu, inscribe us in the Book of Redemption. Avinu Malkeinu, kotvein v'serchel padnas v'chalkala. Avinu Malkeinu, inscribe us in the Book of Sustenance. 
אבינו מלכנו כותבנו בספר זכויות. אבינו מלכנו אינסקרייב בוס אין בוק אוף מרט. אבינו מלכנו כותבנו בספר סליחה ומחילה. אבינו מלכנו אינסקרייב בוס אין בוק אוף פרגיבנס. אבינו מלכנו הסן אור דליברנס. Our Father, our King, grant glory to your people Israel. Avinu Malkeinu, hear us, pity us, and spare us. Avinu Malkeinu, have pity on us and on our children. Avinu Malkeinu, act for your sake, if not for ours. Shalem 476 <laughs>
I'd like to invite Alan Gail Silverberg, who we honor for their 36 years as members of Ohev Shalom, to join us on the Bima to open the Aron Kodesh. Aleinu 478. Aleinu <laughs> l'shabayach l'adon ha'kol L'atayt k'dula l'yotzev reishit Sh'elot s'chanu k'goyei aratzot V'lot s'omonu k'dish v'ot ha'adama Sh'elot s'amach el'chenu k'ahem V'goro l'enu k'chol ha'monam in the year of mourning will find Kadisha Tom on page 482. Yit Kadal, the Yit Kadash, Le Rabba, the Oma Givera Hirote, the Yam Lech Mahote, the Chayechon of Yomechon, the Chaye de Ho Beit Israel. Agala of his man Kareed in Ru Amen. Yeshme Rabba Mitarach, Lamula Mea Maya. Yet Barach, Vietabach, Viet Baar, Viet Roman, Viet Nase, Viet Hadar, Viet Ole, Viet Halal, she made the Kucha Brehot. Le Ela, Ule Ela, Minko Birchata, Vishirata. Tush Pechata Venechemata Damiran Bi Ulma Vimru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Minchmaya Vechaim Aleinu Viapro Yisrael Vimru Amen. Ose Shalom Vimru Amen. Hu Yaase Shalom Aleinu Viapro Yisrael Vimru Amen. Let's find
find ourselves on page 484. I'd like to invite together with a cantor, Danny Shiley, Drew Pollock. We're going to be singing together uh, a piece, the harmonies arranged by the cantor. Uh, you'll find yourself in the Hebrew, the fourth line down, the last four words. One thing I ask of the Lord, for this do I yearn, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all my life, to feel the goodness of the Lord in God's sanctuary. service be without a few announcements, so here we go. Uh, first of all, as I promised, just after Rosh Hashanah, we all received an invitation uh, to be part of Count Me In, to commit to uh, three or more, but three is great, evening services on the uh, weekday evenings, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday night. We've gotten back really a good number, not enough yet, so um, if after Yom Kippur, maybe another Note will go out if you can respond and we'll be able to be assured of a minyan every night between now and the end of June. 
on Simcha Torah, which is coming up before we know it. Monday night, October 21st, is our Simcha Torah celebration. It's really a very different night than it is here tonight. Uh, it's really fun, dancing, singing, carrying on. It uh, takes second place only to Purim evening for fun, 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 but it's a great night. So Monday night, uh, the 21st, we'll be davening at 6 o'clock. And the following day, we have a great tradition here at Oif Shalom that uh, we honor two individuals, two really outstanding individuals for Simcha Torah. Uh, this year, we're honoring Michael Zimit as our Chatan Torah. Michael will be called for the closing blessing, uh, closing Torah reading of Deuteronomy, and Idel Wood will be our Kalat Bereshit, will be called up and will be reading the opening days of creation. That's Tuesday, October 22nd. We always have a luncheon. It's always egg salad and tuna, tuna fish. So if you love egg salad and tuna fish, you're going to be disappointed this year because it's going to be kosher Chinese. <laughs> so I'm going to be sending out an email uh, either Wednesday night if I have any koach left or on Thursday uh, to uh, tell you a little bit more about Idel and about Michael. Uh, if you think there's any possibility you could be here on that Tuesday morning and be here for the lunch of kosher Chinese, just send me a note. Um, you know, just I'm planning to come because the order has to be in with the caterer of cho kosher Chinese on Sunday. So uh, it would be good to know whether we order for 30 or 60 or 100, whatever it is. Okay, the more, the more the happier we'll be. Okay, uh, a couple of uh, sisterhood things. Ladies, you know, if you want to give yourself a real gift this year, I promise you, a real gift this year, and if you have not yet become a member of sisterhood, I promise you, becoming part of our sisterhood, you will absolutely find it to be a real gift. Really wonderful women are part of our sisterhood, and this is a group that thinks outside of the box. They don't do something this year because they did it last year or the year before. They do something this year because it's new and they've never done it before. So the sisterhood paid up membership is October 24th, and it's called Bubbly Brushes Buffet. So there's drinking, and there's painting, and there's a buffet. So um, you know what, really, if, uh, if you haven't been before, this is your year to become part of the sisterhood. And uh, I grow more and more and more and more an admirer of our men's club. I love to hang out with them. Uh, they are a tremendous, great group of guys. So uh, our men's club is going to be having a little bit after that, on November the 6th, sushi and sake. <laughs> so they told me. Because you can figure that out for yourselves. Right? Sushi and sake. There it goes. Okay, so... Um, we have some really great lifelong learning classes. These are classes for us. Kids have their classes. We have our own classes. We've already started the year. Uh, Michael Eisman did a session on uh, opera, which was really well attended. Anyhow, Cantor's going to be giving a class in chanting the Haftarah. If you've ever thought about chanting the Haftarah, how do you do it? How do you learn it? That'll be in November. Also, Dr. Michael Eisman, known to us as simply Michael, uh, but I say Dr. Michael Eisman because Michael is going to be doing a class in archaeology and the Bible, and this is Michael's expertise. He's a uh, professor emeritus from Temple University. Uh, archaeology and the Bible. I'm sure, 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 it'll be fascinating. And then Marvin Crython, that'll be in November, three days in November, Marvin Crython in December. For our lifelong learning, we'll be doing Jewish art and artists. Okay, just a couple of more things. I'm going to be doing uh, a book review 
on a book called Inheritance. Has anybody read Inheritance? How was it? What? Excellent? Then I'll read it. I never read the book until after the High Holy Days, so I want it to be really fresh. So, um, no, I've heard from everybody who's read it that it's like really, and I don't hear this every year, but this is really a great book. So, uh, The Inheritance, November 14th, and that's sponsored by the Sisterhood. I think that's enough of Sisterhood things to report, but I have one, I have one more. Not enough. I have one more, because it's going to be honoring our cantor, Cantor Annalise. Have any of you ever been to a high tea? <laughs> you have. When you've been in China. So um, this is going to be a sisterhood Torah fund, high tea, honoring Cantor Annalise, December 15th at 3 o'clock. So, you know, listen, what can you do better at 3 o'clock on a Sunday afternoon in December than come to a high... No, really. Really. Whether you like high tea or not, coming to honor Cantor Annalise, you're going to be in the right place, I promise you. You're going to be in the right place. She does so much for our sisterhood. Sisterhood loves her. We all do. And um, ladies, if you can make it, and it goes to a great cause, the Torah Fund, that sponsors the five rabbinical schools throughout the world of the conservative movement of Judaism. Finally, let me just mention, mention that though we finish with Yom Kippur tomorrow night, the holidays do not end. They're going strong. Sunday night, 6 o'clock, uh, we'll begin the holiday of Sukkot. And Monday and Tuesday morning, Sukkot services at 9.30. You may notice that the sukkah is almost built. We would never build it entirely before the ending of Yom Kippur. But everything but the most important part, the schach, the roof, is already built thanks to our men's club. Okay, you know what? There's tons of other things going on in the synagogue. Uh, I can't, re can't mention everything. There's a rabbinic saying, tafasta meruba lo tafasta. If you try to grab everything, you wind up grabbing nothing. So those are the things I wanted to mention most of all. So our schedule for tomorrow, Tomorrow we begin promptly uh, at 8.30 in the morning. We get to... Listen, you know, there's no breakfast tomorrow morning. You just, you get up and you come, it's easy. You get up and you come. So, um, Yisker is about, we'll get to Yisker at, at about 1 o'clock, we'll break uh, about 2 o'clock, uh, then we'll come together again maybe just at, at like at 5-ish, let's say. We're Jewish, 5-ish. So a little bit after 5, 6-ish, we'll be doing Neila, and exactly, exactly at approximately 7.10, will be sounding the shofar. Exactly at approximately 7.10. Okay? So, uh, please take your machsorum and put them back on the table. As I mentioned on Rosh Hashanah, and my great thanks to everyone who heeds my plea, we'll keep our talitot on until the conclusion of the Adon Olam, you know what, why not until the closing, the end of the closing prayer, how's that? Is that a deal? End of the closing prayer. Folks, the choir is going to take us back to Renaissance Italy, the composition by the great Italian Jewish composer, Salman Rossi. I wait for this every year on Slichot Night. We sing it but once a year. Salman Rossi's Adonola, 488.
prayer for the new year. During this coming year, may you enjoy good health and happiness. May peace reign over our country and throughout the world. May you have a kiss from your beloved, a smile from a child, a warm, cozy house with the aroma of good food baking in the oven. May you have wise governors and merciful tax collectors, good friends and helpful neighbors. May you enjoy the fruits of your labors, celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, and may the sun shine on your face, but not too much. May you see a rainbow. May your team score a touchdown. May we enter the holiday of Sukkot with uh, a record of four and two. <laughs> May the Sabbath queen enter your home and enable you to follow the teachings of the Torah with love. May you enjoy peace of mind, and may all your dreams be sweet ones. May the world be a better place because you are in it, and may you find delight in reading a book, finding a bargain, doing a good deed, and giving charity with a free and open hand. Whenever it rains, as it will, may you have an umbrella, and may we meet on the streets of Jerusalem in the year to come. Amen. Gemar Khatima Tovah.